In our study of radicals so far, we've only ever been dealing with, or radicals or exponents, we've only ever been dealing with integer value, or even better yet, natural number exponents. So in this section we're going to learn about rational exponents. And it's built around the following idea. If we were to have an expression, say, x to the fourth cubed, when you raise a power to a power, this says we have x to the fourth three times. So we have x to the fourth times x to the fourth times x to the fourth, which is a total of x to the twelfth. And all we did here, shorter method, was we went x to the four times three, giving us x to the twelfth. So if we were to apply this to radicals, let's look at it in this way. If I were to take the square root of x squared, then this would imply that we have x squared being raised to some unknown power that gives us x to the first, because the squaring and square roots are inverse operations and will undo one another. So what do you raise to, and what do you multiply 2 by to get an answer of 1? And the answer is 1 half. So this square root is equivalent to a 1 half power. They're interchangeable. So in order for this to go on, what we're going to do is we generate a rule. Any value, if we take the nth root of it, that is equivalent to that same value being raised to the 1 over n power. And we're able to interchange items between radicals and exponents this way. Now some people or some calculators are designed in order to take square roots, possibly cubed roots, but you can always raise it to any power. So if you don't have the option of taking a higher root, than a square or a cubed root, you can use this to interchange. Let's practice rewriting some of these. So if I have 125 to the one-third power, how would this be rewritten? Well, 125 stays the same, that is our radicand, and we're going to turn this into a root. Now since this is a one-third power, the three, that denominator, becomes our index. So we get the cubed root of 125. Now if you want to go through and simplify this, that's the cubed root of 5 cubed, also known as just 5. So 6 to the 1 half power times 6 to the 1 half power, this would be 6 and 6 being multiplied together. Both of them have an index, have a denominator in the exponents of 2, so that's our index. We're taking the square root of 6 and the square root of 6, which is the square root of 6 squared, or simply 6, if we were to take it all the way. Last one, 3 to the 1 fourth power times 27 to the 1 fourth power. Well, that's 3 and since our denominator is a 4, it's the 4th root of 3 times the 4th root of 27. Now going through and multiplying these, that's the 4th root of 3 times 27. If we take this further, we get the 4th root of 81. Simplifying this, it is simply 3. Because 3 to the 4th power is 81. So we're able to rewrite items in this manner. And applying the concept one further, what happens if we have a, something other than a unit fraction for our exponents, we'll take a look at here in a minute. But in general, when we're dealing with exponents and radicals, we have the following rules. If we have a to the m times a to the n, then this is going to give us a to the m plus n. If our bases are the same, you simply add their exponents. If we have a to the m divided by a to the n, 
then what this will simplify to is a to the m minus n. If the bases are the same and you're dividing, you subtract the exponents. Of course, a to the m to the n is a to the m times n. You multiply the exponents with each other. If you have a product, this will also work with a quotient, being raised to a power, you can distribute over the product. You cannot distribute an exponent over addition or subtraction, but you can over multiplication or division. And what this becomes is a to the m times b to the m. And again, if this were to be division a over b to the m, you would get a to the m divided by b to the m. And we've used that in previous lessons. Now, a to the negative m, a negative exponent does not mean we get a negative answer. What it means is this is in the wrong part of the fraction. So what we get here is 1 over a to the m. The negative exponents is a way of doing reciprocals. So you simply invert or reciprocate your fraction, keep everything else the same. Now a to the 0. Anything raised to the 0 power has a value of simply 1. And we can do this with our division property. If we were to have a to the m divided by a to the m, anything divided by itself is 1, but what this would become is a to the m minus m. Anything minus itself would be a to the 0, which comes out to be 1. So, how can we take these rules and apply them into problems? If I have the square root of 3 times the fourth root of 3, in order to simplify this, I'm going to convert both into exponent form. So I have 3 to the 1 half power times 3 to the 1 fourth power. While multiplying items of a common base, you add your exponents. So this is 3 to the 1 half plus 1 fourth power. And what's 1 half plus 1 fourth? That is 3 to the 3 fourths power. Converting it back, we get the fourth root of 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27, so we have the fourth root of 27. So we're able to move things back and forth in different methods. So if we have the square root of x cubed divided by the cubed root of x squared, rewriting this, we have x to the 3 halves power. We're dividing, so we end up subtracting x to the 2 thirds power. <coughs> Sorry, let me do that again. We end up subtracting, but we subtract the exponents, not the items themselves. So what we end up with is x to the 3 halves minus 2 thirds. Now in order to subtract these, we need a common denominator. So we have x to the 9 6 minus 4 6. 9 6 minus 4 6 is 5 6. We have x to the 5 6 power. Writing this as in exponent, sorry, in radical form, we end up with the sixth root of x to the fifth. So we took it from a division of two items into a single expression. Now, this is great with variables. How do we do it when we end up with numbers? So what's 32 to the negative 3 fifths power? So I'm going to begin by converting this into radical form. I have the fifth root of 32. I'm going to cube that. Actually, I'll put it to a negative third power. So we have the fifth root 
of 32, which is simply 2. So then we're going to raise 2 to the negative third power. 2 to the negative third power, well, 2 to the third power is 8, so we end up with 1 divided by 8. 1 8 is equivalent to 32 to the negative 3 fifths power. We can work with a lot of different radical expressions and interchange them, and now that we have these rational exponents, simplify ones that might have different indices. But as we move forward, being able to apply these concepts into different ways will be very helpful. Go back and review this and be ready to move on and apply these principles as we continue our study of exponents and radical functions.